Thank you so much. They almost got me into tears. I really appreciate being here. Thank you so much, Walton uh, Beats. I really appreciate it. We honor you for, for the invitation. And, um, and it's really like that. It's, it's the ability to receive. I think so many times we, um, we, our focus is to get something from God, but it's actually our focus should be to become better receivers. Uh, the, it's really about receiving. It's not about giving. It's, it's about receiving from the Lord. It's easy. I want to, honestly, for me and my wife, we've always loved to sow. We always love to sow. When ministers come and preach at our church, we always decide beforehand what we're going to bless them with. And, um, and so our heart is to bless and really to invest into the kingdom. Because you don't invest into a person. You invest into the kingdom. You invest into heaven. And, and so um, it's been for us like this. Uh, we had Prophet Ed Trout coming to our church once. And um, there was an amount that I had in my heart to give to them. i give to him. And it's got nothing to do with the, the, the size of the word. It does, it's got nothing. It's got everything to do of the decision that I had in my heart to give. And, um, and I was standing in my, in my kitchen. And suddenly I heard a voice coming to me. And he says, this voice I heard, it says, but you won't have that money to give. And I said, in the name of Jesus, we're going to double that amount. Double. In that moment, you have to recognize the voice uh, of the liar compared to the voice of truth. You have to always recognize it. And so in that moment when I said we're going to double that amount, suddenly there was a divine faith that came to my heart. And um, at the, the day when we blessed him, there was still um, an amount short. Um, and so what happened is, I don't want to, actually I want to mention the amounts, but I don't want to mention the amounts. But there was an amount short, and I sat with somebody, and I said to them, they asked me, how much did you give him? And I said, this is the amount that we gave him, but it was still short of what we trusted God. And they said, we're going to make up the difference. And so we sowed that amount into his life. And it's not about, I never look back, and sometimes what we do is we sow, and then at a later stage, we want to uproot the seed by, because of the conditions and what we all go through in life. But I want to ask you, or I want to, encourage you never uproot your seed through your own mouth once you let it go you let it go because your faith is in god not in man and so it's really it's it's not about the thing and and that was always our heart it's not a church thing i've never thought that i will have a church i never thought i just fell in love with god because god showed his love to me first and we love because he loves us we don't love because it's it's our obligation because i turned a christian You'll always miss it like that. You love because he loved you first. And once we get the revelation of God's love for us, it completely changes us. It completely changes my life. And it changed my life. I've, I've been in church all my life. But I never heard somebody say, ask the Lord to show you how much he loves you. And I, when I heard that message, I, I'm like, can you really ask God to show you how much he loves you? Is, is he really interested in us that much? Can he, can he really? And I said, you know what? I've got no options. You know what? Sometimes it's good to not have options. It's not a nice place. But it's a good place sometimes because that's the place of surrender. That's the place where you will go, push for things that you never thought you can push for. And I, I, I was at a place in my life and I said, there's no other option. I'm going to ask the Lord to show me how much he loves me. And I will not stop until I get it. And the Lord said to me, you know what? I said, but what is it? How do, how do I find that? Um, how do I seek it? What, what am I looking for? And the Lord showed me, when you are searching for treasure, you'll know when you found it. You don't find a piece of rock and then rejoice because you found a piece of rock. You know when you found treasure. And you never stop searching until you find, and you'll know when you find it. And I encourage every single person in this building, if you want to change your life, Get to know the love of the Father for you, for you personally. You know, I've served in church. I want to say serve in church. I've been in church for seven years. We had our church, and the Lord said to us, it's time to, to we started the church from our home, from a cell group, and everything built up, everything. And the Lord said to us, 
in seven years time it's time it's complete it's time to move on and we have to hand over the church to the to to somebody else that's going to continue with the church and so you know when you and and for us walking on faith at this moment you never when you're in church this becomes your comfort zone this becomes your comfort zone because it's easy go up and and you know what you're getting but and so the Lord called us away from the church and he called us me away from business as well because I've been full-time in business and full-time in uh, ministry so so then we started to walk in water and I said to some people then you learn to start sometimes to walk on air as well <laughs> you don't know always where you're going but I want to tell you you got to trust the one that knows where you're going you don't know always you can't always see everything but you got to trust the one that sees everything but it's difficult to trust somebody if you don't know they've got your back it's very difficult to trust somebody if you believe they have harm in their heart towards you or they want to damage you sorry I just I said you can't fight a fight um, imagine this this uh, wrestlers going into a match and they, they, we have a partnership and and my partner I'm always doubting if my partner won't turn against me. You can't fight life thinking God will turn against you. Because that's why Jeremiah 29, 11, it says there, and, and it's important, it says the plans that I have for you is to harm you and to break you. No, it doesn't. It says the plans that I have to, for you is to prosper and not to harm you. So one thing we've got to understand and learn as a child of God, not as a Christian, but as a child of God, is to learn that you fight from victory and not towards victory. You already have success in this life. You're not trying to get successful. You are successful. You are already accepted in Jesus Christ. You're not trying to get accepted. Anything you do, let me rephrase this. You can never change the love of God for you, no matter what you do. Because Jesus never died for you because of what you have done. And I want this to sink into your heart because it needs to change what we believe about who we are and about whose we are and about why he came. He came to set up a new kingdom into your heart. He came to set up the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit, he came to set him up into your heart, into your life, into your body. That's why it says that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and that he dwells within you. He dwells within you. You've got the kingdom dwelling in with you to be a solution to the earth and to people around you and not to be part of the problem. You see, when we have our minds set upon things that's on the earth, then we are so many times complaining more than the people that's in the world. It's really like that. And you see, sometimes we don't feel loved, but the Bible says, do not be carnally minded for it is death, but be spiritually minded for it is life and peace. You see, the thing is about God is, he says these words, he says that those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do we do that? We do it by believing that who he says we are in the spirit, that is the true you. And that we live from the person that is in the spirit. And all the promises and all the blessings of God that he, he gave, he gave into your spirit, man. So many times we said, I need more patience. You don't need more patience. You need a revelation of, a revelation of his love for you. Because love is patient. You really don't need. We get in traffic and we get stuck there and there's or that this this um this buses that transports people turn in front of you. You know that we're all holy when it comes to church. When we get out there and somebody turns in front of you which just says is not supposed to, then uh we shake the bin and we see what's on the inside of the bin. You see some I, I heard this this awesome thing is um, uh, on, in marriage is we take this, this bucket with all the blue balls and the other bucket with all the pink balls and once you bump them uh, we normally say that um, you bring out the worst in me but actually only what is in you can come out of you and sometimes you need these people around you to rub you the wrong way 
so that what is in you can come out, can be exposed. It's not always the people around you. They just rob you to show you what's in you. They robbed Jesus so much, but he kept quiet. They beat him. He kept quiet. I want to tell you something this morning. We all go through things, but, and I want you to know something that don't feel alone when you go through things. Never feel alone. We all have to face the good fight of faith, and we have to keep our faith, and we have to believe. You know, God, don't move based on your faith. Your faith don't make God move. God moved by grace. He moved before you can move. (laughs) He died before you can do anything for him. He died because you were a sinner, not because you're a saved religious Christian trying to live right, trying to do right. He died because you were nothing. And so, so many times we get born again and we try to live a better life to become accepted and to become loved and to be loved and feel more loved, but that's the wrong way around. If you live to become something that you already are, we live so many times to become something we already are. We're trying to get something that we already have. It's the same thing I give Vulti my pen. And then if he keeps asking me for my pen, it's why do you keep asking me if I already gave it to you? You see, when God, when Jesus died on the cross, he released into our spirits, he released all the healing, all the joy, all the peace, all the the freedom that is available from heaven. He's on the inside of you. It's with you. The reason why we don't experience it is because of a carnally mindset. Not because of that something's wrong with you. But our mindset becomes carnal because we are more focused on the five senses. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. If I don't feel it, it it can't be true. You see, you can't see the signals that's running from here to the monitors and everything. You can't see them, but they are real. And so that's the same thing. God sends signals and God speaks to us constantly and trying to encourage us constantly, but we need to tune in to his station. And so many times, and this is what happened to the disciples. Thank you. This is what happened to the disciples when Jesus sent them over the sea to the other side. He said to them, go over to the other side. And he got into the boat with them and they encountered the storm. And when they encountered the storm, what they've done is, is, you know, the disciples' faith was based upon what they saw Jesus done. The Bible says, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. That's us. But what happened to them is their faith was based upon what they saw Jesus has done. And so they, this whole storm is happening to them and they wake Jesus up from, from his sleep in the storm. How do you sleep in a storm? Does, do you sleep in a storm? <laughs> now you try to fix everything in your storm. Try to control everything in your storm. But Jesus sleeps in the storm and they're waking up and they say, they say these profound words and I want this to, to rest with you. They say, do you not care? When you hit a storm, listen to your heart that tells God, don't you care where I am? Don't you care? Don't you care what I'm experiencing? Don't you care? And Jesus, and they say, don't you care that we are perishing? They already predicted the outcome with their mouths, that they are perishing, they, they're going under. They forgot that they've got the king of kings with them. Because of a hardened heart, because of their unbelief. And Jesus, Jesus rebukes them because of, he says, you've, you, you have little faith. You know, we need faith to believe how good God is. Because grace on this side is God's part, which through Jesus Christ has already give, gave us 
according to Ephesians 1.3, he already gave us all blessings. He gave it to us. And then he says, how will you know what's being freely given to you? It's by the Holy Spirit. He's already given this, all of these things to us. And then our part is faith that believes that these things in the Spirit actually can manifest into the physical things. I try, to, I try to, to, to explain this as simple as I can because you're going to go home and you're going to wonder what did he say? My faith don't move for God. So if I fast, I don't move God. If I am a nice Christian, I don't move God. If I'm a more loving person, I don't move God. God don't respond to you because God already responded to Jesus and to grace. Your faith only responds to what God made available. You already have the victory. You are already healed by his stripes. He says in Isaiah 53 and he says in um, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. That's a past tense. He already healed you. But I don't feel healed. I don't feel. I want to tell you something. God gave you authority, like Volti said, God gave you authority to dominate, as Genesis 1 says, that God has given us dominion on this earth. He's given you authority to dominate and to use this authority. I want to tell you something. Just two days ago, two nights ago, we ate some, um, we ate some, um, something, and that, that night, I think it was around 12 o'clock, I think it was like, I don't know if it was food poisoning or something, but suddenly, like in an instant, it just came on me like crazy, like crazy. And I, and I, and I, and I, um, I laid on the ground and my, my whole body felt like it's like it doesn't want to function. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this thing. I rebuke this, this, um, this poison. I rebuke this. I take authority over this. You have no right. I don't have time for you now. This is, this is, there's no time for this. And so sometimes we need to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and, and stop believing the lies that we have, we have given because we don't see the healing always. You know, one thing I learned when I started praying for healing for people is as soon as somebody don't get healed, you want to make up an excuse to protect your pride. The first time I went to, to pray for somebody that's dead, um, it was a twin that one died. I went um, to pray for them, and I didn't see it happening. And suddenly, my flesh wanted to make excuse for why I didn't see it and why we shouldn't see it. Never make an excuse for what Jesus says you can do. And he says, you will do the same works and greater. And so what we do is we become sometimes self-focused, self-righteous in the sense of we bring ourselves into the picture and say, but, but I'm disqualified. No, you aren't disqualified because you are qualified through Jesus. First Peter 1 John 4, 17, it says, as he is, so are you in this world. And just because you think less of yourself don't mean God haven't put his spirit in you. And just because you think you can't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just the way you think. All of you can raise the dead and heal the sick and cleanse those who have leprosy, and all of you can walk in divine health all the days of your life. Amen. Can I tell you why Adam lived so long? Because he had no reference of dying. Nobody told him, the older I get, the lower I have to go. You see, what we do is we are so many times hung by our own tongues. Because we, at a certain stage in your life, you're like, oh, I get this pain, so it's got to be all pains. It's got to be, why? Moses' eyesight, he was 120 and his eyesight wasn't dim. In other words, is when God gives us, and I want to take you to this verse, is, um, you can put it on the board if you have it. It's uh, 1 Peter, um, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 to 5. Do you have it? 
Let me just get it here. I just want to. I just want to give you the. Read this with you. This is so. I. Amen. It says there, as his divine power has, has given us all things. Say with me, all things. all things. All things that pertain to life, that means physically and spiritually. God has given us the, uh, pertain, uh, all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Uh, through, through, if, through the word through means it's a bridge. You, you, you walk over the bridge to get somewhere, or through a tunnel. You go from one place through a tunnel to another place. That is what through means. And the way to this life is through knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Say with me, divine nature. That is the supernatural from God. That is the supernatural. That things, you don't go according to how things function in the earth and how the physical things, you go according that God's word and his divine nature can override any circumstances. I've asked people so many times, do you believe, whom of you believe that this heater can bend? Whom of you believe that this heater can bend completely? You're like, this is a crazy dude. It, it only cannot bend because that's what you believe. I don't say we've got to start bending the thing. Let's keep it upright. But you hear what I'm saying? The limitation is not on God's side. The limitations of life is on your side. It's on what you believe about your life. Jesus says this to, this, to the one person that came to you. He says, as you believe, let it be unto you. Ouch, Jesus, what am I believing? Sometimes what I believe is maybe God don't want to heal some people. Maybe God don't want to do this. Maybe God don't want to do this. But what if God has given healing not based upon any person's doing and healing is available right here, not based upon anyone, but only based on our ability to receive that. And from the receiving part to what is available, that is where the challenge comes in. Because it's what you believe will, uh, will either empower you to receive or will really try to fight you not to receive. And the devil will always come and he will lie to you. He will tell you that you are not good enough. You are not worthy enough. He will always try to put a focus upon you. Why? Because all of us know that we all have fallen short of his glory, God's glorious standard. Are you with me? All of us know we're not going to make it. Believe me, I know that I won't make it. If I have to qualify somebody, it won't be me. Anybody home? But God calls the unqualified and he anoints them to do the work. He anoints them to get the things done. Not because they are perfect, not because they're good. The thoughts that you are battling with in your mind, I'm also battling with them. But he gives us his word and he says, listen, there's a better way. Let's work on this. this uh, use my promises Use my word to escape the lust that is in the world. What is this lust that is in the world? The system of the world. That desire to have what the world has, all of those things. Because through the promises of God, God has given us a life and life in abundance. I hope this makes sense to you this morning. That I want to take you back to God, don't respond to your faith. Your faith, you need to have faith to believe that God is such a good God that he wants these things for me. You have to believe that God is such a good God that he wants me to always be healthy, that he wants me. I want to tell you, it's a, it's a fight for your faith for you to believe that God wants to prosper you for those who are lacking in money. It's a fight for you to believe that God wants to prosper you. And what you do is you bring yourself into the occasion. I don't, I don't know about you, but I've got a two-year-old, almost turning three. And sometimes I find myself praying for a better life and better conditions or a better situation or, or maybe a house or maybe a this. 
I pray for these things and then I bring in the innocence of my baby girl. Do it for her. You don't have to do it for me because according to me, I'm disqualified. So let's try this one. Anybody? And so what the Lord shows me is that Jesus has become the purity and the innocence by which we receive. You don't receive based upon you and what you do and how good you are and what a nice Christian. And that's why sometimes when people tell me, yo, this guy is such a nice Christian, what does that mean? How do you rank this? When, are we on a schedule? Do we have to do certain things to become a better Christian or a worse Christian? And you see, that is self-righteousness. And, 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 and the Bible says in Isaiah 64, it says that your self-righteousness are like filthy rags. As soon as it's about you and your performance, it's thanks to God. It's about Jesus and his performance, and you need to learn to receive what the kingdom has been brought to you. You know, in this journey, um, wait, let me, let me get back to my previous story. I was challenged with this, uh, like I said, like the food poisoning, and I command this thing to go, and I refused this thing, and I knew something If I don't stand in my faith, if I don't stand in my authority, tomorrow I might still have the the effects of it and everything. And so the Bible says, this promise, it says, even if you drink poison, it shall not harm you. And so you take these promises and you fight the realities that you are facing, facing in the physical. And it was within, I think it was within 15 minutes, within 20 minutes, I was, I was, I was, I was uh, completely breaking that thing. I went to bed. I was shaking a little bit. The next morning, I was perfectly fine. I just refused it. I, I will not allow this. And so, in other words, is we so many times through our belief system allow things into our lives, which Jesus never paid for. We allow poverty, we allow struggle, we allow sickness, because sometimes we believe that God. Will, turn, will use God allowed this thing so that I can learn something. It's not true. You will learn things through what you're going through. But it's not once you have your partner in the corner and you're afraid that he's going to beat you, you will not be in relationship with him. And that was my problem all my life. I've been in church for many, many years But I always wondered, when will God, I knew there's a calling on my life, but I've wondered, will God change my face because I look good so that he can use me for his kingdom? When will God hurt me or do something to me to have it so that I can have a testimony? And so the day when I got cancer, the Lord told me that he's going to heal me. So one thing I knew, I can't die from this. So that was settled. He said, he's going to heal me. And I want to tell you, his promises is he's going to heal you. He took all your sickness. He took all your disease. He already healed you by his stripes. You have the victory. You just have to fight the fear and the unbelief and get it out of, your, out of our hearts. Does this make sense? And so that day when I got cancer, I thought that God, wow, this has got to be my testimony to sometimes preach the gospel and to one day preach the gospel. And God sent it somebody my way to pray for me and this person has prayed for so many people previously with cancer and they immediately got healed. And when this person came to me and he prayed for me, it's like I rejected the prayer. Yes, you can reject God's healing you can reject God's goodness because he already gave it to you. Here's God's goodness. We can reject it because of a belief system that is not in line with his word. Is it too hard? And I rejected our healing. I want to tell you something. I really, really should have. It should have been much easier for me to receive my healing that day if I only knew what I'm teaching you right now, that God wants you healed immediately. God's healing isn't the process. 
God meets you because that's what you believe. If you believe your healing goes through a process, that's what you believe, that's what you receive. Because God cannot force himself upon you. He, Jesus died on the cross and he came and he gave salvation. He says, guys, here's a new hope, but you've got to have faith to believe in me that I will that I've got new hope, I've got a new dream for you, I've got a new life for you, have faith in me. And you only responded by saying, Jesus, I believe in you. You responded with faith. You didn't make salvation, you didn't create salvation, you only responded in faith. And so that day when I rejected my healing, I went after six months of chemo, I said, God, I can't do this anymore, this is, this is not nice. So I've been there, I've, I've walked the road. I'm not trying to just preach something to you, I really have walked the road. And I'm still walking the road. <laughs> I'm walking the road healed. People say, are oh, you in remission? I said, no, you don't understand, I'm healed. Give remission to somebody else. It's what you believe, you will eat the fruit of your mouth. I want to challenge what you believe so that you can walk all the blessings, promises, and love that the Father has for you. He's never, ever against you. He's got no harm for you. He's got no heart to destroy you. He's got no heart to take people from you. You know what we will do if somebody comes and they want to kill somebody? I don't want to say it, but we'll most probably send him to heaven quicker than he thought he's going to get there. Anybody home? And yet we come and we say, God, you are plucked. We use this nice phrase. He come and plucked his beautiful flower. We don't call him a murderer. We use this, no, God took that person from me. That is why, that is why people struggle to believe in him. That is why people don't want to have a relationship with him. Because when are you next? Imagine Jesus had to pray for people and wonder, maybe God sent the sickness. So am, I going to, am I going against God by, by raising the dead? God killed this person. Now God, I'm going, to, I'm going to raise him because you killed him. Let's play some dominoes with them. You put them down, I put them up. And our people out there, us, we, we have these nice sayings that we use between Christians to get us, go, just get us keeping going. But I'm going to tell you, the world out there rejects God because of the system where people tell them God took somebody. God only receives. God gave his own son so that we can live. And I don't say you have to raise somebody from the dead when they're 120 years old. If you want to, do it. But one thing is, when somebody goes and they were sick or when some, a disease was there, they were being stolen. And it's our responsibility to walk in the word of God and to believe what he says and to go out and pray for people and heal the sick and raise the dead freely receive Matthew 10 verse 8 freely receive freely give so this morning you're not only a receiver but you are a giver to other people stop trying to think that you're not good enough that you're not I said to God all that he needs is not I didn't I didn't say this but all that God needs is a yes from you Romans chapter 1 verse 16 I don't know how many time, how much time do I have left so I'll just keep going and keep going and going and going. Romans 1 verse 16, it says there, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. The biggest and the best and the most amazing miracles I've seen in my life is when I'm not ashamed. The Bible says fear of man is a snare. When you go into a war, you try to stay alive. And there you learn how to fight the battle. Don't listen to people that's not praying for the sick to tell you 
about healing. No matter the age, no matter the stature, no matter if they've got a big church, a small church, a medium church, or no church, no matter if they've been in ministry for millions of years. Okay, some of you go too far. 50 years, let's say 50 years. Thank you for all of them. What I'm trying to say to you is Jesus was crucified at the age of 33. I'm 36. I'm young. You can see that. Imagine Jesus was three years younger than I and he was hanging on the cross this age. And we think that when you are that age, then you've got to be there. Jesus was this age, younger than me, offending the Pharisees because of what they believed. Offending the Pharisees. You can imagine this young person. Most of us will even be offended if if this young person tells us because it's got to be the older ones that, that knows everything. It's the Spirit of God that was there from the beginning. It is Jesus yielded to the Spirit of God and the power of God. And even even the people around Jesus said, how does this man speak with this authority? It's not about age. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God's kingdom that has been, there's a price that's been paid. Jesus died on a cross. He was bruised. He was beaten all of that so that he can set up his kingdom in you so that we can be the difference. And when, once your mind is that you are fighting from victory, you don't need to obtain victory. You don't, when you are challenged with sickness or anything, you don't fight to get healed. You are healed. You fight what is trying to steal your victory and trying to steal your faith. You fight that off. You fight off the things. You don't, it's difficult to obtain something if you don't have it. It's difficult to fight for something if you don't have it. But once you believe that you have it, it's easy to fight the enemy off. Because the word says that he paid a price so I can be well. And I will not accept anything less than that. You see, failure is a non-negotiable. I want to, many of you will maybe know John G. Lake. What he's done with his students, he sent them to people's homes that were sick. And he said to them, you will not return until that person is well. That's training. If you go to the Navy, if you go to the Army, you've got to get trained. If you're going to become the best, you've got to get trained. You see, Christianity has become a spectator sport. That is why the people at home scream the hardest when the rugby players aren't doing their job the way they're supposed to. It's a spectator sport. But but you don't find them running on the field and doing a better job. That is why religion comes in in the church set up because it became a spectator sport in, in so many places. Not here, but in so many places. It becomes about knowledge that puffs up Love edifies. Love will fight for a person. I want to tell you something. When a person spends time with Jesus, they have compassion for the sick. They have compassion. They have love. They don't want to see somebody suffer. Why? Because God died through Jesus Christ so that we can have life and life in abundance. If we go through difficulties, we are in a fallen world. You're not not the special one because you get some this difficulty and that person get that difficulty. You're not the selected one. It's like it's like I said to so many people, somebody says, You've got the sickness because God can entrust you with this. Seriously, what made you so special? What made you so special that you are so strong to carry that thing? No, Jesus carried that thing. So that you don't have to. So what God is asking us to stop holding on 
to what doesn't belong to you. That, that poverty mindset, that, that sickness, that disease, that struggle that you are struggling with, stop holding on to it. Because once you let it go, he can get the glory for you or your, your manifestation. Because he died so that you can be well. He became poor so you can become rich. He became sin so you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want to read this to you. It's amazing. Psalms 103 verse 1 to 5. Bet you actually sent it to me. On it. it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. That means you are forgiven. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're sitting here and you feel condemned in any area of your life, that's not God. God cannot bring anything against you because you are one with Him, with His own Spirit. You are one with Christ. God, can, God cannot deny you a child or deny you blessing or deny you anything because you are one with God. He cannot deny Himself. You see, the flesh, mind, carnal mind says, I am here I am praying to God there and I hope that I'm going to, you know how many people ask me to pray to God for them because they think my prayers are more powerful than their prayers? No, no, the reason why you bend your head when you pray is because you talk to God inside of you because he's in you. He's not out of you, he's in you. We have to believe it. The reason why so many Christians are afraid of demons is because, let me rephrase this. You are either afraid of them or they are afraid of him that is within you. But you've got to know who's in you in order for them to, 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 to actually move. Because they know when you believe who's in you and they know when you don't believe who's in you. There were just a, test, a short testimony and then um, I'm going to try to land. I had the, my one friend, he, he phoned me, he says this, this young man and his wife, but he beaten his wife. And he phoned me, he said it was something like 11 o'clock at night and we had to come to his house. And when I got to the, back, to the outside gate, um, the, the guy, how can I say, the, the demon that was, was in him said that Ruan is outside. Because the demons can see where Jesus is. But you don't have to see me. You've got to see Jesus. You don't take me home. You take Jesus home. Amen. It's not what I say. It's what Jesus says. That's what it is. And so, so he, he recognized that you are aware of him that is within you. They know when you are with him. That when you've been with him. When you have relationship with him. And like I said, in order to have relationship with him, you've got to believe that he wants better for your life than you want for your life. <laughs> the only way you will surrender your life to him is when you believe that he will do better with your life than that you will do with your life. The reason why people don't surrender to God is because they think God don't want that good for them. That is what the devil comes and he tells Adam and Eve, did God say? That you're going to die. Maybe this tree will benefit you. And that's what the devil always does. And then we close ourselves towards God. And so what happened is I came into this house and I walked in and I stood. And the, the person was sitting on the couch and my friend was on this side of the couch and he was sitting without his t-shirt. But you could see that spirit just wanted to fight. And I, I, I came in, in uh, I stood in the, um, ah, what you call it, uh, doesn't matter. But I just stood in the, in the, in the lounge uh, and the Holy Spirit said to me, stand back. This person stood up and the Holy Spirit said to me, stand back. And I stood back like just two, three steps. And this person came right, it came right in front of me because you could see that, 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 that thing in him wanted to fight. And as he came right in front of me, the next moment he just flew off. I promise you, I've never seen something in my life. I, I, if you told me, I would also be like most probably a lot of you, can this be? He flew off. He hit the cupboard, he fell on his face, and we just jumped on him and just cast the devil out. 
can this be? Oh, yes, it is. I saw it. I didn't know it. I didn't know that it can be. But once you really want to know Jesus, and I really encourage you to know Jesus. He's really awesome. He's really awesome. The reason why people don't spend time with him is not because you're busy. It's because you don't believe he's awesome. Because I want to tell you something. You spend a lot of time with people you like. And just because we use this phrase busyness, it actually means that we don't really believe he's that good. And that is why you need faith. You need faith to believe that he is as good as he says he is. I'm not saying mix the old covenant and the new covenant. I'll explain that at another t- uh, stage. I can explain a lot of things what happened through the old covenant. But you have a new covenant with God. And he's not out to get you. He's out to see you walking in the fullness of the victory that he has already established through grace. And he needs your faith to actually walk in everything that is provided. Because it pleases him to see you blessed. It pleases him to see you walk in the, the, the dominion that he's given you. It pleases him to walk. It's my son. Look how he cast out that devil. <laughs> it's, it's my son. Look how he healed. Look how he raised the dead. It's my son. Come on. I don't know. I don't know about you, but you're not better than he is. He says, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven? Who do you believe is your Father? The challenge is what you believe. He's not the problem. What we believe about Him is the problem. That's your biggest challenge. When things go crazy in your life, protect your heart. Do not like the disciples, blame him. They shifted the blame. Don't you care? Don't you care? Look where I am. Do you know why Jesus told them, you have no faith, you have no faith? Because the thing is, is fear, fear will steal, try to steal that bit of faith that you have, that he has the capacity to take you out of this. He has the capacity. He has given you the power to raise. You see, Jesus told him, listen, guys, you should actually have commanded the storm to be still because I've given you power and authority. Now you're waiting for me to wake up from my sleep. You woke me from my sleep to do what you're supposed to do. (laughs) And so Jesus said something, and I'm finishing, really finishing with this. He said, it's better for me to go that I can send you the helper. You see, the disciples weren't paying attention to Jesus and his greatness and the the, the ability for them to do what he has done and what he is doing. They didn't pay attention because they believed he's going to be there forever with them. They believed he's going to always be there king is always going to be my brother is always going to be the one who's doing everything and so this is what happens in the church setup we are comfortable spectators because we believe that the pastor is going to keep casting devils out he's going to keep being the one healing the sick he's going to keep being no 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 no. this is given to the people it's given to the people You have the power. You don't need to go and pray 10 times to feel better about yourself. Just go and do it. Use your mouth. Command the demons to flee in Jesus' name. Command the bones to grow. Command the things. Command these things. Why do I say command? Because you have to do it like your father does. He commanded things and then it manifested. You command things and it manifests. Your, your biggest challenge is not your faith. That's why Jesus says, if you have only little faith, as a master seed, okay, guys, this is all you need. Okay, you don't need more faith. All of you in this room have more faith than a master seed. If you didn't know it, now you know it. Yeah. To move mountains. Your problem is your unbelief. The problem is your unbelief. And unbelief really comes from a place 
where we move into the carnal. Why am I saying this? Is that Jesus, the disciples brought this person with his son and his son got epilepsy and his son fell many times into the fire. Many times into the fire, into the water and they tried to pray for him and they couldn't cast out the devil and they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, but, um, uh, and Jesus cast out the devil out of the sun and the sun fell down and it seems like he was dead. Listen to this. It seems like he was dead. How many times when you pray or command things, it seems like it's dead? Where's your faith? Your faith just goes through the back door. If I can explain it like that. You have faith. I'm, not, I just take, I'm just picturing something for you. You suddenly have this unbelief of what's happening now. This, this kid is dead. And Jesus took the kid looking like he's dead and he picked him up and says, come. What would you do when somebody looks like it's dead after you cast out the devil? Are, are you with me? Because we are focused on the carnal, what we see. And the reason why the, 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 the um, disciples couldn't cast it out is because most probably this child, when they prayed for him previously, he also felt. And they also saw that the, we don't see something. You see, when Jesus prayed for the fig tree, the next day you saw it dead. Why? Because it died from the root up. The Bible says, when you lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover. We need to stop settling for failures. There is no way out that you're going to get healed. And we're going to fight and fight and fight and fight for what is ours. Does this make sense? And so the unbelief from the disciples, and later on they came to Jesus and said, Lord, why can't you cast this demon out? He says, um, it's your unbelief. It's because you only perceive the thing by its physical nature instead of being spiritually sensitive towards what's happening in the spirit. And then he says, these kind don't come out by fasting and prayer. And it doesn't mean this kind of demon. It means this kind of unbelief. When you pray, when you fast, it pulls out unbelief from your flesh. When you pursue God, when you read your word, when you study the word, it pulls out your unbelief because it transforms your mind. It renews your mind to believe the way your father believes. When you fast and pray, you don't make God move because you don't need to move because you have his moving Holy Spirit, powerful Holy Spirit in you. You transform your mind so that you will believe what he says you can do, you can do it. And then we live from fighting from victory, not for victory. And please, when somebody is here and you lost a loved one and somebody told you, I also love, lost loved ones. I lost my mother. I went and I prayed for her at the morgue. I think it's five days. First of all, my whole family was with me that we're going to raise her from the dead. Halfway, we lost half of my family. They stopped believing. At the end... It was only me left. Walking with Jesus, you have to decide what you believe and what you're going to stand for. See, a lot of Christians never decide what they're going to stand for. That's why they fall all over. I said, I'm going to stand for this till everything. And the reason why they put it in the ground is because I didn't have more time. And another reason why they put it in the ground is I've prayed afterwards and my, the Lord said to me, but she didn't want to be there anymore. And you can't go against their will. But I want to tell you something. I had these people coming once to me and they said, why are you praying for the dead? How does the family feel? I said, you know what? I said, what's the worst that can happen? I said, what if they get raised from the dead? What if it's your child? Do you want the Christians to be a spectator? 
Do you want to tell me that, oh, Shane, God so loves you, man. You're going to be okay? No, 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 no. I want you to use that power that's in you. I told my wife, if I go down, you're going to raise me. Because we've got a work to do in this place. What, do you want me to go and do garden services in heaven? Heaven don't need me. That's why I'm here, because you haven't put me here. They haven't put you here. Stop waiting to get there. That is why Jesus sent his spirit, so that he can empower us and not leave us with no power. Because the power is not yours. It's not my power. I don't have, it's his. Amen. Glory is his. And you decide what you go for. I said, Jesus, you told me to go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those of leprosy. I don't care if the whole Bethlehem thing come crazy, but your word says that. You said I must pray for the, uh, for the dead. I'm telling you, I've been in fridges. It's crazy, but what I learned there is priceless. Priceless. I can never explain to you what I learned in those moments. You can never take that away from me because I don't care. Because I'm loved by the one that loves me. And I'm doing what he told me to do. That's why religion is such a horrible thing in church. Because it does nothing, but it wants to say everything. It wants to give explanations for why it can't do what Jesus says you're supposed to be doing. Because people, when they get healed from the dead get raised from the dead, healed, God gets the glory, not us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this morning. Father, thank you for the, the opportunity. Father, and I thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray for every person. I just... I just thank you for your love, Father. Thank you so much. I just see how people are getting healed right now. Where you're sitting, you don't have to do anything. You just receive it. It's a free gift. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just see how people are getting healed right now. Kidneys being restored right now. Brand new kidneys. Brand new kidneys. Brand new kidneys. Brand new kidneys. Brand new knees. Thank you, Lord, for brand new shoulder and shoulder bones. And thank you, Jesus, for new necks, new necks, new bodies. Lord, I thank you for new feet, feet that are being painful, painful and hurt. Thank you, Jesus, that you burn them and right now heal them. Right now, heal them. Thank you, Jesus, that you're healing them right now. Because Holy Spirit, you move in this place. You do move. We don't ask you, have to ask you to move. You are moving because you love every single person more than I can ever imagine. But I pray that they will understand. Get, that I pray that they will have a revelation of your love for them so that we can love the world with a revelation of how much you love us. In Jesus' name, I command some devils. Devils, in Jesus' name, I command you to get out of this place. You will not touch anyone in Jesus' name. People that will be bound in Jesus' name, loosed right now. Loosed of fear, of anxiousness. People that's struggling to sleep right now. Uh, sl yeah, you're struggling to sleep in Jesus' name. Of worrying and worrying and worrying. I loose you right now from the demonic force in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I break, I break every bloodline curse over you because your parents and your mother and your mother, they were all worrying about life and sickness and disease. I break that thing in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you come to set the captives free and I thank you. I demand freedom into this place in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I thank you. I declare it freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. I thank you, Father, as a way for freedom over people right now. People thought that they weren't even thinking that they were bound by something. Father, I just declare freedom, 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 freedom. Holy Spirit, freedom. In Jesus' name, freedom, freedom. 
freedom of a people, freedom of a people, freedom, freedom in Jesus' name. People that had stomach, stomach aches and burns in Jesus' name, you are healed in Jesus' name. I declare healing over you and in you, the manifestation of your healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Legs that are hurting, your backs being restored, being newly aligned in Jesus' name. Don't wait for me to finish the service to pray for you to receive. Receive right now, right now, right now. The anointing is right now. Your Holy Spirit's moving right now to heal you. Just receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Migraines, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no authority over people. Just let it go. Let it go. Don't hold on to migraine. Don't hold on to self-pity. Don't hold on to a place where you feel that people care for you because you are sick. Let it go because God's got a better life for you. God's got a better life for you than to be in pity. In Jesus' name, freedom, 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 and freedom, freedom, freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Arms, arthritis, carpal tunnel, being healed right now. New bones. Heaven gives new bones. Heaven gives new veins. Heaven gives new hearts right now in Jesus' name. Heaven gives new ears and eyes and eyesight to the blind. I rebuke the demon of blindness and muteness and death. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. Get out in Jesus' name. Eyesight's being restored in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see legs are growing out right now when you're sitting and feet are being restored. Your feet, your toes. There were no feeling. It became like there was, it's almost like your nerves has been affected and your nerves in your, in your toes that's being restored, the blood and everything being restored. Feet be restored in Jesus' name. Right now. somebody that it feels like the devil is sitting on your shoulder and constantly talking things to you and negative things to you the Lord's asking you to stop believing that I break that life from your life in Jesus name I break that life from your life Thank you, Jesus, for wholeness, 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 wholeness. Fullness. Fullness, fullness in Jesus. Fullness. Fire, fire, fire. I speak over them, Lord. Fire. I pray, Father, that every person in this building will go out and want to give what they've received. Want to pray for the sick. Want to heal the sick. And don't care what people think of you and if it doesn't or does happen what's the worst that can happen thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for love 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 Father I thank you for your thick and tangible presence right now that's just that's just coming down on every person in such a fresh way more thick, 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 tangible presence, Lord. More, 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 Jesus. You love them so much. You died for them. You've been beaten for them. You've been bruised for them. You love them. You took their sickness, you took their disease, you took their infirmities, you took their condemnation, you took their shame. And it's not about what you've done, it's about what what he has done. Accept it, receive it, 
Let go of the shame that you carry all your lives. Let go of the shame that's been burdening you and pushing you down. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. Loose. And get out. And you will not touch anyone in Jesus' name. I bind every spiritual force in and around this place that's not of God, every demonic force, everything of sickness and disease and spirit of infirmity, I bind you and I cast you down in Jesus' name. You will not touch anyone. You will be powerless over people. And I call God's people to walk in the power and authority that God has given on the inside of you. It's not a feeling. It is stepping out because He said so and believing that because he said it, you can do it. And he promised that his Holy Spirit's within you. And if you have not received the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, I, I ask you right now to ask the Holy Spirit, come and fill me with your fire and power. Come and fill me with your fire and power. I want to walk in the fullness of what Jesus has paid for. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you have experienced healing right now, I want you to just, just check your body. Just check your body and just wave your hand. If you've experienced anything changed, pain left or anything, just, just wave your There we go. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm going to pray for you. We're going to finish off now, but I'm going to still pray for people that really, if you need prayer, if you need me to pray for, yeah, for healing or whatever, just come to the front. We're going to pray for you. Those who want to go, you're welcome to go. Thank you for your time. I just pray that you will just spend time with him. He's really awesome. And he's fun. He's fun. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It is the fact that God is so joyful over you. And believing that, that is your strength. That he's so joyful. He rejoices. I said it before. He's like, it's like, don't get me wrong, but it's like a, a, a puppy, a doggy that's waiting for you to wake up so he can spend time with you. He's waiting for you. I want to tell you that's the best life. If you want to have purpose, your purpose is to know him. That's purpose. I want to tell you something, when everything is being taken away from you, then what you believe who you are is, is up for challenge. And the Lord had to reaffirm this in my life because there was no business anymore, there was no church anymore. I became a house daddy talking about food <laughs> but I'm a child of God and God said to me and he spoke something to me which, which was amazing he said to me heaven is behind you your business can go your church can go but heaven is behind you which can never go if you want to be established be established in the kingdom and know that the kingdom is always fully backing you fully backing you fully backing you fully backing you the kingdom everything can go when my mom and dad when I heard them I would say that they never wanted me I said God you wanted me I've got a family in heaven that can never turn me down when challenges comes and they will challenge what you believe and what you believe about the one that loves you but hold on there's always better for you. Because goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And Jesus leads us to pastures, green pastures, places of rest. 
Rest in His love for you. Rest in His goodness for you. Amen. Amen.